Meet Saurus, a remarkable new analog synth from Tone 2. It starts with an audio engine that replicates original analog waveforms with greater accuracy than any other virtual synth on the market. Look at these waveform plots and you'll see what I'm talking about. Let's start by looking at how quickly you can create really complex stuff using just the Source presets. Here's a piece of music called La Brea that I created using nothing but Source presets. Take a listen and notice that there are no effects of any kind being added by Cubase. This is all Source, even the electric guitar part. Let me take you through how easy this was to create. For this first drum part, I used Kraftworker, which creates an entire beat using the onboard arpeggiator and modulation matrix. I'm going to arm the click track and then use D2 and D3 to lay in a few bars of drums. Now, to mix things up, I'm going to add a second drum track with a completely different groove. This program also uses the ARP and Matrix to create a looping style. But if you wanted to use a drum sequencer to trigger the individual sounds, Saurus can do that too. Under the drum category, you have loads of individual drum sounds like Big Snare, or the 808 Kick. Okay, so now I'll play in a few bars of this alternate beat. And now I'll add a really simple bass part using Techno SEQ. And here's how the whole tune looks after just a little cutting and pasting. And check this out, that really cool synth lick. If you look in the MIDI inspector, you can see it's only one note. Saurus is doing all the work here. And one last note here before we look at programming. This is the CPU load monitor for Cubase. Even with seven instances of Saurus, all using effects and really small buffer size, the CPU meter is barely indicating. Next, I want to show you just how easy it is to program Saurus, even if you're relatively new to synth programming. The first thing I'm going to do is initialize Saurus. This will wipe the entire instrument clean 
and leave us with just a basic tone. The sound begins in the oscillator section. And if you look closely at the coloring on the faceplate, you can see a black line which shows you the signal flow. First inside of the oscillator section, then onto the filter, performance section, effects, and into the modulation area. Press the square white button to cycle between the oscillator waveforms. These are what give your sound its basic character, and you can adjust the pulse width on each for even more variety. Keep in mind that the oscillator is generating these waveforms by creating pulses of sound, and you can use the PW control, which stands for pulse width modulation, to change the shape of those pulses. The saw wave will morph into a double saw, and the square will morph into a pulse and peak. You can find a complete guide to the pulse width options on page 12 of the Source Manual. The filter section is just as flexible. For starters, it's an analog filter, and it has six different filter types. Each one will sculpt the sound in a unique way. There's also frequency modulation and feedback controls built in. And the primary envelope controls are also right here to let you set the attack time, decay time, sustain, and release. And unlike other synths, the modulation in Soros is capable of running at audio rates, thousands of times faster than anything else out there, which allows you to create effects like this. Now let me show you how quick and easy it is to get from an empty patch to a usable sound. First, I'll increase the mix controls between each oscillator and its sub-oscillator. And I'll mix up the choice of waveforms to create some variety. And I'll open up the master mix between oscillator 1 and oscillator 2. Next, I'll engage the unison to multiply the voice count. I'll also use the boost, which is an acoustic feature that gives an enhanced sound without drastically changing overall output volume. I'll dial in just a little chorus and reverb. And I'll set the cutoff to about 3 o'clock to add just a little resonance. Now listen. Now to get things really moving, I'm going to set the arpeggiator to ARP Sync and set it to 2 beats per minute. One last trick, I'm going to use Matrix 1 to connect LFO 1 to the stereo pan to create some wild auto panning effects. I'm going to use the saw wave for LFO 1 so it will have some percussive snap to it. Let's also lock it to the project tempo by selecting the BPM button. Then I can use the frequency button and the data screen in the upper left corner to see the timing interval. For this, I want it synced at one beat per minute. I can control how dramatically I want it to pan using this amount slider, and I'll set it at about 50%. Finally, I'm going to turn off the unison function so you can hear the effect of the stereo panning more clearly. And here it is with a drum loop dropped in beside it. We've only just scratched the surface of what this incredible instrument can do. To find out for yourself how easy Soros is to use and how great it sounds, head to the Tone 2 online store today and grab yourself a copy of Soros.